Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be doing a cottage pie. So, in a pot filled with cold water and salted, we have about four pounds of Yukon Gold potatoes. And in this cast iron skillet, which I've preheated over medium heat with a little bit of olive oil, we're going to drop in a pound worth of uh, ground beef, salt and pepper to taste, and we're going to brown this off and then drain it. And after that, we're going to get some uh, vegetables into this to start building some flavor in our sauce. So adding to the skillet, we have one medium onion, and we're going to add in about two cloves of minced garlic as well to this. And we're going to sweat it down and get it nice and brown, almost like jammy. I really want that natural sweetness to come out from the onions and the garlic. Um, this is still over medium heat with a little bit of olive oil introduced after we drained off that ground beef. And I'm adding in some oregano and paprika. It's just kind of like my signature spices that I always, always use. Um, paprika could be Hungarian, it could be smoked, it could just be standard run-of-the-mill paprika, but I always like adding that <clears throat> in to anything that I'm really cooking. It just gives it like a nice robust flavor. Um, and tomato paste as well. I'm not looking for a real tomato-y sauce, but I am looking to have that sweetness come through from the tomato paste, especially since it's double concentrated. I really want to showcase that this sauce can just be multiple things aside from savory. And to that, we're going to deglaze with a little bit of Cabernet Sauvignon. Um, just any wine that you would drink at the table, I would, you know, use to cook with. I wouldn't buy, like, cooking wine like Marsala wine or, or, or sherry or, or anything like that. I, I would really use something that I would, you know, drink alongside my meal and uh we're just gonna let that reduce down by half and soak up into the onions and then we're gonna add in about a quarter cup worth of uh, flour and basically what we're doing is we're just making a roux with the residual fats that are left inside the bottom of this pan and it's absorbing and clinging onto the onions and we're gonna let this cook off a little bit and to that we're gonna add in some chicken stock um you could use beef stock you could use pork stock and don't drop the spoon like i did but yeah you could use any stock that you really choose. Um, chicken stock was what I had on hand, so I'm just going to be utilizing that for the time being. Um, and yeah, just make sure you whisk out or stir out any of those clumps. You want this You want this to be as smooth as you possibly can get it. Um, yeah, just keep going, keep going, keep going. It's going to boil down and start to thicken. And all that is is just, you know, the roux in action. We really wanted that to, you know, cause this gravy to, to come together and and become, you know, thick and nice and saucy and, and great so that it clings on to the, um, to the ground beef and the vegetables that we're going to add in later. Um, to that, I'm actually adding some, some thyme that I chopped up and a little bit of the habanero hot sauce. I like my food a little bit spicy. I've always enjoyed a little bit of heat, so just a couple dashes goes a long way, <clears throat> especially with that Tabasco habanero. It's uh, strictly a cooking hot sauce for me. I don't use it on my wings or on top of food I just use it to add a little bit of heat where you know you don't really want to add in like fresh serranos or or Thai chilies um, once that is up to the boil and it's at the consistency that you like return that ground beef and just let it simmer and now we're on to the potatoes so once those potatoes are cooked where you can take a paring knife and pierce the potato and pull it out without any resistance that means that they're done so i did a half stick of butter to the four pounds of potatoes in the pan a um, couple tablespoons of sour cream some pepper um, i'm gonna really try to control the salt levels in these potatoes because i don't want it to be too overbearing or overpowering rather um, you could always add but you can never take away so just from past mistakes I've always waited until the end where I decided to add salt in to you know to adjust the seasoning um, I'm just gonna whip that together get it all nice and creamy and I did put a little bit of half and half in here just to thin it out because it was kind of a little bit thicker than wallpaper paste which is you know what I was going for um, and basically like with shepherd's pie it's real easy you can use fresh vegetables you can use whatever you really want um, I just always grab like one bag of mixed vegetables from the freezer section. Uh, you can't go wrong. You don't have to cook them or anything. Like just you know, right before you put this into the oven, you're going to uh, 
incorporate that into the gravy stir it around and then you're gonna top all of that with the mashed potatoes that you just made and I like to smooth it out and then make little ridges like that in the potatoes just so I have more spots that are getting crispy as it bakes this oven's at I think 425 and I'm gonna have it in the oven for about 30 minutes 40 minutes until we get a nice golden brown top just like that and that's it that's the video um, be careful that pan is ripping hot the filling inside is ripping hot um, just enjoy it like share subscribe comment do anything you got to do just make this page go viral I appreciate you guys and I'll see you next week Shit, my phone's ringing. It's hot, man.